Hello and welcome to the news from Bahraini International. I'm Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Qurabiya Palace the Deputy Prime Minister and a number of officials, where he discussed a number of projects included in the Government Action Plan. His Royal Highness stressed the need to meet citizens' needs and requirements, as well as solving their problems in order to provide the best services and high living standards for Bahrainis. His Royal Highness affirmed the government efforts to maintain the national gains and benefit the country and its people in a stable environment that supports supports the progress of the kingdom and benefits its citizens. His Royal Highness then directed to fix the problems facing citizens in roads and requested the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning to find the best solution regarding this issue. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting today at Qurabiya Palace and the Cabinet Secretary General Dr. Yasser bin Isa Al Nasser made the following statement. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for the support and care he received during his medical condition. He also thanked His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa for his follow-up on the condition of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister. Minister, expressing thanks and gratitude to the people of their kind sentiments and for the celebrations made following his recovery. He affirmed that the citizens' and residents' sentiments reflect their loyalty and noble values. His Royal Highness also thanked their Majesties, their Highnesses and senior officials for inquiring about his health and for congratulating him on his recovery. On behalf of the Cabinet, the Deputy Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak, expressed pleasure in His Royal Highness's chairmanship of the meeting following his recovery, wishing him abundant health and happiness. On the occasion of the World Education Day, His Royal Highness asserted the government's keenness on providing access to education according to the best quality standards, noting the honorable achievements made during the Kingdom's educational march, which extends to 100 years. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed to support small businesses and issued an order to the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism to cooperate and coordinate with the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and industry to identify the needs of small businesses, fulfill them and facilitate their procedures. His Royal Highness was briefed on the course of the meetings of the government team and parliamentary committee to study the Government Action Plan 2019-2022 and hailed the sense of responsibility and positivity of the meetings, which resulted in agreements on most of the plan's items. His Royal Highness affirmed the government's keenness on continuing constructive cooperation between the two authorities and on promoting joint positive action. Expressing thanks to the government team, led by Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Akhar, Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. The Cabinet reviewed the accomplishments of the government in the housing sector, including building five residential towns in the period of 2015-2016, in addition to carrying out tens of other residential projects on a budget of 1.5 billion dinars. The government built 25,000 residential units following royal directives to build a total of 40,000 and extend 4,500 loans to facilitate building and buying 
residential units. The government earmarked 87 million dinars to support 11,000 beneficiaries from the current Mazaya program, in addition to offering 2,450 residential units through social housing projects by cooperating with the private sector. Further, the government offered 3,500 residential units and around 4,500 residential units in partnership with the private sector. In this regard, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa called for ongoing development of housing policies and decreasing waiting lists for housing services and highlighted the importance of extending comprehensive services to all towns and across all residential projects. The Cabinet reviewed the tenders that have been submitted in 2018, over the course of which 119 tenders have been accepted for projects of 278 million dinars in the transportation, health, construction sectors. 123 additional tenders have been submitted of an estimated cost of 188 million dinars in 2018, as well as 21 tenders through the Gulf Development Program of 243 million dinars. The cabinet also reviewed 84 projects in cover the sectors of transportation, health and construction. The cabinet approved a draft law to sign a treaty for international transportation over land for passengers and commodities between the Bahrain and the UAE. The cabinet approved a draft law and referred it to the Council of Representatives, which pertains to treaty between Bahrain and the UAE to reinforce their cooperation in the field of air travel. Moreover, the cabinet approved a draft law and a similar treaty between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia to reinforce their cooperation in the field of air travel. The cabinet then discussed a draft law on Bahrain's approval of a change in the organization of Islamic cooperation by laws that pertain to periodical meetings. Finally, the cabinet discussed approving the Organization of Islamic Cooperation's Treaty of Privileges and Immunity. The BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmad Al Khalifa received Pakistan Navy Chief of Staff Admiral Zafar Mahmoud Abbasi and the accompanying delegation in presence of BDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Dia bin Saqar Al Nuaimi. The BDF Commander-in-Chief praised the outstanding friendship ties between Bahrain and Pakistan, noting the advanced military cooperation. The Director of the BDF General Command, Major General Hassan Mohammad Saad, Assistant Chief of Staff of Logistics and Catering, Naval Major General. Yusuf Ahmad Malallah, Director of Military Cooperation, Rear Admiral Mohammed Hashim Al Sada, and Royal Navy Forces Commander Commodore Mohammed Yusuf Al Asam were also present. The second deputy of the Representatives Council, Ali Ahmad Zayed, said that the Parliamentary Committee for Studying the Government Action Plan for the years 2019-2022 affirmed that it has reached an agreement with the government delegation led by Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and that it has approved more than 90% of the plan. During a meeting held yesterday at the Representatives Council, the second deputy affirmed the mutual agreement between the government and the council regarding the government action plan and the results will benefit all citizens. He said that the plan will be a launch for the joint work between the government and the parliament to maintain the national gains, provide high living standards to citizens, especially when it comes to retirement, as well as bahrainization of jobs and achieving sustainable development, especially in the fields of health, housing and education. The second deputy added that the aim of holding these meetings between the two sides is to ensure the implementation of the government action plan ideally with the goal of prioritizing citizens. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmad bin Muhammad Al Khalifa, conveyed his greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the President of the Lebanese Republic, uh, Michel Aoun, and his wishes of success for the Arab Economic and Social Development Summit. He also conveyed the greetings and wishes of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to the Lebanese President and people. This 
came during the minister's participation on behalf of His Majesty the King in the 4th Arab Economic and Social Development Summit held in Beirut yesterday. The Minister of Foreign Affairs lauded the efforts of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in hosting the 3rd Arab Development Summit. The minister affirmed the keenness of the Kingdom of Bahrain in supporting joint economic and development Arab action to achieve the interests of Arab countries. He noted the importance of alliances and cooperation to guarantee food security and providing strategic stock to avoid any potential crisis in the future. He also underscored the importance of activating joint Arab action in all vital sectors in order to combat economic and social challenges facing Arab countries and peoples, including extremism, wars and attempts to categorize people based on their religions and sects. He added that such challenges which threaten our peace and security will overcome will be overcame through devising integrated plans developing education and protecting investment and intellectual property the minister of foreign affairs noted that the kingdom of bahrain in support of strategic arab action signed a memorandum of understanding on the establishment of arab common market for electricity which will have an important impact on saving energy between arab states he stated that the Kingdom of Bahrain has submitted its first national voluntary review on the implementation of Sustainable Development Goals 2030 during the high-level political forum held under the auspices of the United Nations Economic and Social Council in New York. Regarding the Palestinian cause, the Minister of Foreign Affairs called for collective efforts to implement the projects listed in the Strategic Sectorial Development Strategic Plan for East Jerusalem 2018-2020. As for the refugees crisis in the Arab countries, the Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain has provided aid and established health, education and social centers for refugees in a number of brotherly countries. He stressed the importance of cooperation between international donors, specialized organizations and Arab funds in order to alleviate the suffering of refugees and to secure financing for development projects in the Arab countries hosting them. The delegation of Bahrain continued to participate in the meetings of the 80th session of the Committee on the Rights of the Child, held in Geneva, led by the Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil bin Muhammad Ali Humaydan. During a speech at the beginning of the meeting, the minister stressed the kingdom's keenness on providing high-quality care and health services to all children without discrimination, noting the attention the kingdom gives to health of children, adolescents and youth. Humaydan also discussed the educational aspect in Bahrain and the importance of ensuring that all children of both genders have their rights to free and advanced education, eliminating disparities between them at all levels and providing appropriate training for all the affiliates of the educational corps in coordination with the relevant authorities. The minister highlighted the care children with disabilities receive, which is reflected in developing policies, legislations and programs that promote their health, development protection participation and integration into public life without discrimination between them and their peers. Industry, Commerce and Tourism Minister Zayed bin Rashid Al Zayani opened yesterday Festival City, the main event of the kingdom's largest shopping festival, Shop Bahrain. It runs for two weeks and until the 2nd of February and offers a wide range of exciting activities suitable for all age groups. I was there and I filed in this report. Shop Bahrain, organized by the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, offers entertainment for the whole family at the Festival City, located at the Bahrain International Circuit, and hosting a selection of fun activities and attractions suitable for all age categories. Festival City is part of the Bahrain Shopping Festival. It is a venue that we have added to the festival to create more activity around the festival. It's mainly aimed at families, uh, but it also caters for different uh, age groups. Uh, this year we chose a different venue to be next to the Bahrain International Circuit. We picked this venue because of the space available here. We have 22,000 square meters. 
It's the largest we've carried out uh, and this enabled us to include more activities, uh, more variety, much more F&B outlets. It has uh, more than 16 carnival games, uh, more than four big rides, uh, more than 30 restaurants and many, many more. Um, last year we've got more, more than 70,000 visitors over two weeks. This year we had the same period but we're expecting more of people coming in since we have bigger space and much more bigger things to do inside the festival city. A multitude of visitors are flocking to the event, which runs for two weeks until February 2nd, which includes a number of fun-filled family entertainment, a wide range of exciting activities, live performances, carnival games, outdoor markets and outdoor cinema. It also features a daily lineup of live local bands for visitors to enjoy. I came from UA, I came and, and attend here and it's nice, I love it and I'm enjoying it. The lights over here, they're, it's very colorful, the environment is great. It just makes you happy the moment you enter here. It's also a great opportunity for local business owners and restaurants to display their products to the crowds and make good profits. We are a, a coffee shop, local business, and we serve also plant-based foods. The festival so far has been great. Uh, I, I find it very profitable and really fun and uh, I love meeting all of these people every day. Festival City, the main event in Shop Bahrain, aims to revitalize the tourism sector, further positioning Bahrain as the leading tourist destination regionally and internationally. The Festival City is back for its third year as part of Shop Bahrain Festival events, creating a wonderful platform for families and everyone to enjoy food, music, games, movies and much more in a wonderfully decorated atmosphere. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar. Southern Governor Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa has launched yesterday two initiatives themed Green Environment and Preserve Your Neighborhood. The two schemes are part of the Governorate's drive to consolidate community partnership between the public and private sectors and promote sustainable community development. Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali stressed the Governorate's keenness on bolstering joint cooperation and coordination with other relevant authorities to enhance community awareness, reach out to citizens and reveal environmental, social and and security aspects. The initiatives aim to engage all community segments and maintain social fabric, as well as improve different areas of the Southern Governorate, promote green environment, expand green spaces and encourage sustainable energy. A reception and commemoration ceremony was held yesterday under the patronage of the Royal Guard Commander Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa at Isa Air Base, which featured a number of participants from Bahrain Defense Forces Special Duty Force participants in Operation Renewal of Hope in Yemen as part of the Saudi led Arab Coalition Forces. Deputy National Guard Commander Brigadier General Hamad Khalifa Al Nuaimi received and honored the Special Duty Force participants on behalf of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. During the ceremony, the Deputy National Guard Commander delivered medals of appreciation from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to a number of officers, non commissioned officers, and members of the Special Duty Force for their patriotic efforts, for standing beside their brothers in arms, and for maintaining high levels of moral, professionalism, and commitment while fulfilling their duties. The event was attended by a large number of senior BDF officers and a number of relatives of members of the special duty force. The National Bureau for Taxation, NBT, today held a workshop primarily aimed at increasing professional auditors' awareness in regards to the VET procedures and legal framework. In addition to equipping them with the knowledge uh, they need to provide accurate VAT advisory and uh, audit services, the workshop attracted a number of uh, representatives from various audit firms and addressed uh, VAT-related inquiries to ensure the use of best practice in auditing. Today's workshop is a part of of a series of workshops held by the NBT aimed at increasing public and private stockholders' awareness regarding VAT procedures and legal framework to achieve the highest level of compliance. The NBT reminds taxable entities to refer to the list of audit firms that can aid in the implementation of VAT, which is available on the NBT's website. <laughs> 